What's good? You know what time it is. It's the black bandana. It's two black MMA journalists. It's time for black market picks. Yeah, I'm your host, Leroy Stephan. This is my co-host, Divine Prodigy, aka Travis Clark. We're gonna talk about this fight after we get done with our picks. But we're about to give you all the top value plays for UFC Fight Night 109 in under 10 minutes. Okay, we used to do under 20 minutes. We're doing an under 20 minutes. But before we get started, um, I got to say thank you to Ball Club Box, our sponsor. Check them out. Now I'm going to full description because this video is shortened. So uh, they're a sports apparel product. You subscribe. You pick your teams. They send you hand-picked items every month. You're subscribed to best these pass, which is like three club box or executive boxes for um the price of what two, I think. It's crazy, crazy deal. Go check out ballclubbox.com, sign up for the full season pass. That's the best deal. But right now, it's time to get into UFC Fight Night 109. We haven't had a card in a little while. It's been a two-week layoff. I'm happy to be back. Um, all I'm stuck with now is WNBA. Had a hell of a sweat early, but let's uh, that, that shows you how desperate I am. I'm, I'm on the fiend stuff, but let's get right into it. Um, I'm about to hit my timer here. I'm about to get my timer out. Do, 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 do. Where's my timer to get started? And of course, once I hit my magical timer, then we're going to be able to get this thing on a ball so in three and two no and one and let's go all right and the, the top price, price is up, huh yeah yeah the top the price, price range is from 9.6 8.7 top middle is 8.7 to 7.7 and then the bottom is seven point whatever so you know after seven whatever you know you got it. you got it. you got to do the deal right now all right you got so it. i'm 12 <clears throat> seconds behind because of Javai, so let me get into it. my number one overall player on the board is misha circanoff um, Vilkan Ozdemir, if you watch his fight with Kelly Anunson, his takedown defense in wrestling, it's not terrible, but against high-level wrestlers, it is atrocious. I'm looking for Misha Serkinov to ground him again and again and find a submission sometime within the distance. Um, I don't know when. Uh, my number two overall play is at ninety. Uh, that's at $9,300. At $9,600 is Marcin Hale. Um, I really like him against Demir Hasvik. Hasvik is a tough opponent, nonetheless. Uh, I like his his uh, ability to get the fight to the ground and control Heisvik and find the sub sometime within the distance and get passes uh, and, and, and all types of stuff like that and hopefully get the sub within the first two frames. Marcin Feld is a top-level BJJ guy. And my number three guy at uh, 90... How much is Abdul Razak Hassan? 90... 9,000. 9,000. 9,000? 9,000. Okay. At $9,000, Abdul Razak Al Hassan... Amari um, Akhmedov is a uh, usually runs out of gas in the third round. That's when he's prone to the TKO. But Razak Alazan is absolutely a killer, and uh, I like him inside the distance. I don't know if he will get the early finish, but uh, or how much grappling he'll be able to do. But I definitely have to finish. Travis, what's your top tier looking like? Number three, I got Pedro Munoz, 9,500. I mean, against Damian Stasiak, he should. Probably we should win this pretty handily. I know Stasiak is more so a kicker on the feet, like throw those spinning back kicks. I think his grappling is, is is decent, but I think if Pedro wants to win this fight on the ground, he will. I think he will keep it standing, even though I would probably take it to the ground, catch one of those kicks. But Pedro can win this anywhere he wants. He can set up the uppercut and get him on the feet, or you can take him down and, and sub him out. Pedro Munoz is a stud. So number two, I like Misha Serkinov. Vulcan Ozmir, I guess, earned his fifth. His fifth uh, in the world, best lightweight, best light heavyweight ranking. He beat a shot OSP to me. I don't think he's worth it. But Misha Serkinov is definitely on the come up. Um, I believe he's going to get the takedown. He's going to look for the submission. And that's what we want. Takedowns the king, it seems. Passes the ground, all, the ground passes, all that stuff advances our king in this DFS MMA now. Number one is Abdul Razak al -Hassan. I believe he is the L word of the card. I don't want to say it or jinx it, but you know the L word. You know the L word. 9,000, I think he's going to get that first round finish over Omari Akhmedov. He's a Olympic judoka. He's working with Johnny Hendrick on his takedown defense. Don't you say anything. Don't you interrupt this. Don't you interrupt this moment. Omari Akhmedov is chinny. Abdul Razak Hassan will, Al Hassan will knock him out in the first round. I'm calling it. I'm calling it. Lock him oh. in. 
Come okay, on. mid tier. Let's get into it. My number one overall play is Ben Saunders at eighty four hundred dollars. Um, I really like. I like that fight. Okay, between mm. him and um, Peter Sabata, I think he has a striking edge. I don't know how big one, but I like this fight. I like this fight a mm. lot. At um, eighty three hundred dollars, I like Jack Hermanson. Um, just a little more than uh, Alex Nicholson because he's more technical striker. But Alex Nicholson is also in play at seventy nine hundred dollars in a fight that I really can't have confidence in. So uh, Alex Nicholson is my number three play uh, in the mid tier. Who you got? You, you only gave two people. No, Where's I didn't. said Ben Saunders. Yeah, Jack Nichols, Hermanson. Yeah, and Alex Nicholson. Oh, you doubled up. Okay, you little doubled up. Okay, I got you. I got you. Number three, I got uh, Peter Sabata. I just think um, I don't really like this fight like, as much as you do, but I just don't think that Ben Saunders is going to improve at all. I think Peter Sabata can still improve. I think his his loss to, um, I think, Kyle Nope was more so, I mean, it just happens. You know, MMA happens, but I think he's still better than that that performance. And I just feel as though Ben Saunders comes with the same game. He does. He's not really improving. Peter Sabata will improve. But, I mean, like I said, I don't really like that fight. Uh, number two, I have Bojan Velikovic. Now, the guy, he always finds a way to get a split decision. Like, let, hear me out. He's one and one and one in the UFC. But against, uh, who was the last guy he faced? He was a stud. Who was the last guy he faced? Well, was Sultan Ali. Sultan Ali. I believe it was Sultan Ali, right? Sultan Ali. All right. Yeah, Sultan Ali. I'm sorry. But even then, they found it was like it was a close fight in the judges' eyes. So whatever he's doing in the judges' eyes is, is getting there. So Michael Graves... You, you could have said he lost, but he got the draw. Or oh, and then uh, Dicho Rico, I believe he he beat him, right? Yeah, he beat him. I mean, I'm just saying in these judges' eyes, whatever he's doing, is 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 is, um, is wowing them to the point where it's either a split decision or he ekes it out. So I mean, in, in that in that type of case with this price range, where I really I really don't like it. I mean, you can take a chance against, uh, especially Nico Masuke, Masuke, who's been out for what? How long? I think a few years now. He, he definitely have some ring rust, I believe, right? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, that's why I, I'm just saying, take the shot. I mean, you, you never know. And uh, the number one is Jack Hermanson. Uh, I just think, like you said, he's the more technical striker. So I'll take him over Alex Nicholson, who who showed some improvement in that uh, match against Sam Alvey. But I still think Jack Hermanson would just outpoint him through a three round, three round decision. But I don't really like the mid tier. So okay, all right, lower tier. My number one play overall play in the lower tier, and one of my favorite plays on the car is Trevor Smith. Chris Mosey is allergic to grappling. If you have been playing DFS for over a year and don't know that, then you're going, you don't like money, I guess, but grapplers against Chris Mosey equals money. Um, Glover Teixeira is my number two play at $7,000. He has a very healthy floor of about 30 points and a ceiling of who knows he's the better boxer. He's not at that much of a height and reach disadvantage. I went back, back and watched his fight against John Jones. Quitted himself very well. It was just the elbows and all the unorthodox attacks, which Alexander Gustafson doesn't do. This all comes down to wrestling. If Gustafson can't get his wrestling going, then I think he's going to be in trouble. Number three is for me in this price range at seventy five hundred dollars uh, is Razor Madati. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he he's a an awesome wrestler. Has awesome pace. If he can get uh, going in there against a Joaquin Silva. Uh, he's going to be on a winning lineup. So those are my top three plays in this price range. Uh, <clears throat> number, I'm going to say, you say Trevor, we know Chris Camosa is allergic to grappling. But Trevor Smith and his, especially his last fight against Andrew Sanchez, he just wanted to strike. Like, what's up with that? You're not going to strike with Chris Camosa and win this fight. Andrew why, Sanchez why is a, was an All-American wrestler. I know, but he, but if, if Trevor Smith, all he knows is wrestling, why are you trying to strike? He looked horrible standing up against that guy. He horrible. No choice. He had he could have did something. He was over there doing the chicken legs against Andrew Sanchez. Literally. But um, let me get to it. Number three is Razor Madati against he, I think he has the experience. I think this is definitely a winnable fight for him. He was even favoring the last guy who uh I think he went down with an injury. What was the last guy he was that Joaquin said was supposed to originally face? Was it? Who was it? Who was it? I forgot, yeah, man. All right, for the sake of time, we don't we don't care. But I, either way, I was favoring that guy. I'm going to favor Madati, Madati over him as well. I think the grappling, the wrestling over this young and inexperienced Joaquin Silva can get it done. And if you look at the guys Razor, Razor, Madati has lost to, they've been, they've been pretty tough. And I think they're definitely tougher than 
um, Joaquin Silva. Number two, I have Glover Teixeira. If you look at Alexander Gustafson's last fight against Jan Blachowicz, he was getting too tagged up on the feet for me. I don't think this is the, the Alexander Gustafson of old. He might be getting up there or, or feeling the effects of these past wars. I don't know, but it wasn't good against... He basically had to go to the wrestling in order to stop the onslaught that Jan Blachowicz was giving him. And I think Glover Teixeira, who's pretty well-rounded, can box and can wrestle, is going to give him some fit. So I like I like Glover at 7,000 from a card where it's really top-heavy to me. And number one is Demir Hodzovic. Um, I know you like Marcin Hell. I'm going to take Hodzovic. Um, he's done in his past promotions, his past fights, he's done pretty decent against some Brazilian jiu-jitsu grapplers. He knows all he has to do is stay on the feet. Um, Marcin Held has lost to Diego Sanchez. He's lost to Joe Lozon. And even if, even though the DFS MMA community know he won against Joe Lozon, he didn't do that much in the eyes to, to even give a victory. Like, come on, come on. Demir Hodzovic is work has been working on his one two. If you've seen his Instagram account, he knows that the takedown's coming. He's just gonna one two him to death. And for sixty six hundred, I'll take it. I'll take the win. I don't care how it happens. Just give me the win. Hodzovic, he has ten, he has potential. Um, I like him. Six point six. Give me him. Give me him. Give me him. Him and uh, Glover to share. Then round out the rest of the lineup. And we have about thirty seconds left on the dot. That's oh, we not beat many. it. Be cutting it close, man. But we beat it, man. That's because you talk too damn much. But um, <laughs> uh, uh, I hope you like the new artwork we got for all the uh, podcasts for <coughs> this one. It didn't turn out quite like I, as, as, as good as quite like I wanted, but it's all right. Um, for the MAS Fantasy Podcast, that one turned out perfect. And, of course, for the School of Black Negro Jitsu in Road Now, go follow uh, at Black Negro Jitsu EDU. But now we got to talk to Travis about this fight, which unfortunately yeah, Travis was beaten down. Into oh, please, a bloody pole. please, please, <laughs> no, I'm just please. If, if that did happen, though, I would admit it. I would just be like, hey, guys, it just wasn't my night. But no, um, <laughs> it, 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 it just wasn't my night. But no, it got canceled, man. They said um, it was something in my blood work. I don't know what it was. I think it's all BS at the end of the day. But um, I'm still going to the hospital, like the doctor's office Friday to get that checked out just to make sure it's nothing. But maybe it was because I ate before I got my blood drawn, which I don't think you should do. You should fast. But, you know, they're saying it's something in my blood. So we're, we're going to see. But either way, when I told the promoter for Stellar Fights um, about that, uh, he was like, so hey, do ask your opponent and his team if they want a kickboxing match. Because with that, I only just had to get a physical done, which I already had completed. So I asked them, and um, they said no. Which I guess was, I don't know, because, I mean, at this point, the tickets were non-refundable. His whole family was apparently supposed to be there. He sold out all his tickets. It was like 15 of them. I'm like, might as well get the fans what they want. You sold out all your tickets for non refundable as well. So, I mean, he did. He said no. His team said no, which makes me believe what I already knew, which that he was just trying to take me down the whole time or he was going to. So they're trying to reset the fight up for uh, September 9th. I'm going to get in shape for that just in, even in case it happens or if I get on – another card or something like that. So we will have this fight. I will become like an, an, uh, 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 one of them DraftKings guys you can select one of these days. So, um, but I mean, it's, it's all good. Maybe my, most everybody's mostly just saying, hey man, it was just a test cut to see if you could do it, which I did it. I mean, it was 175, which was the weight limit. I made it at 174. So I was pretty good. I was pretty good. I was ready to go. But I mean, hey, stuff happens for a reason. It just wasn't my time. I'm gonna get them in September. I got them in September. Yeah, you weren't uh, you weren't talking to me. I was sending you texts. I was like, oh man, he got beat up, man. He didn't. Oh uh, no, like no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't hide from. I'd be like, hey man, he knocked my ass up. No man, if he knocked me out though, I probably wouldn't have did this show today. We would have talked about it. And I've been I've been embarrassed, but no, it's all good. But uh, if you want the full breakdown of this card, uh, MMA is Fantasy podcast. We're gonna be taping that tonight. Me, Beast Mocal, Eric F, and referee Bobby Wambacher. Next episode of the MMA Edge Fantasy Podcast is going to be me, Beast Mode Cal, Eric F. I think I'm going to make uh, Houdini serve his uh, debt of sl uh, servitude to me after he lost to me in the head heads. Now he's my slave. He has to come on the show. I don't know which one. I'm thinking about doing it for next pay-per-view. But uh, Black Man won. He enslaved the white man. So, awesome. <laughs> yeah, man. That's what Black Market for, for tonight. Peace out, guys, and uh, see you guys later. Abdul Razak.